if we look at any number, right, what number do you guys like a lot? Four. Four, four is a great number. Let's take four, and if I square this, but take the square root of it, what do I get out of that? Four, right? Because, uh, well, what's four squared? Sixteen. Square root of sixteen? Four. Well, what if I made that uh, negative four like this? What if I squared it and then square rooted that? What's that? Yeah, I would get a four out of that, right? Um, this should look very familiar to you guys. Do you guys remember, it's not really an operation, what principle we use to get only positives out of something? Absolute values. There you go. So this is really just saying that um, if we square something and then take the square root of it, it's like taking the absolute value of the same thing. We can put the negative there if we want. Like this example, we got that quantity 9 plus r, we're squaring it and then taking the square root of it, which means we can really just take the absolute value of 9 plus r. So what if r is negative 10? Then what would we get out of this expression? No, we would have a solution on that. Because we're squaring that negative, right? So let's say that, for example, that r is 10. Well, this is saying that we could just use the absolute value of 9 plus negative 10 which is the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. Right there, right? Well, the same concept up here is the square root of 9, that's in parentheses, plus negative 10. And now if I square this and square root it, I should get 1. So that's kind of the question mark here. So that'd be the square root of 9 plus uh, negative 10 is a negative 1. And if we square negative 1, we get 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So this one is true. Um, that was just to demonstrate why we can write it as the absolute value. I, I don't know if that's helpful or not. Yeah, the absolute value of 9 plus r is the answer, um, which uses that absolute value notation like it asks.